Chuck. Yes, 30th Neil. anniversary of the Hubble Space Telescope. Ah, right. Of the launch. Yes, it is. Oh, yes. And I, I was not going to take that one alone. Okay. We have to get the big guns for that. That's right. Right here. Professional help. Don't <laughs> <laughs> say it that way. I need professional help. <laughs> I have issues I'm trying to resolve. Uh, Jennifer Weissman, a friend and colleague, thanks for coming up to my office. My pleasure. Excellent. Excellent. And she works at the Goddard uh, spa we got a Goddard here, and I always confuse. Yeah, the here in New York is the Goddard Institute, Institute for Space Studies, studies, which focuses on like planetary atmospheres and weather and climate. Right. The Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. That's so right. Thanks for coming up. My pleasure. For that. And you specialize in regions of star formation in the galaxy. That's right. We I use, uh, with my colleagues, different kinds of telescopes to study how stars are continuing to form in our galaxy. All right. Nice. There you go. There you go. See? Mm -hmm. Well, let's just, I, I just, there's some backstory for the Hubble that I think is we could get out in, this, in the next few minutes. So, Hubble 101. Hubble 101. So let's do it. So okay. first, uh, what's how big is the mirror on the Hubble telescope? The mirror, or we sometimes call it the aperture, but the mirror is about 2.4 meters across. It's about 96 inches, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and mid 90. So that's not very big. That's nothing. We have much bigger telescopes on yes, Earth. Yes, we do. So now, so. That's amazing. So then why not just use a ground based telescope? The reason Hubble is. Because we got some big ones exactly. down here. Exactly. Right. You said 2.4 meters. We got five meters. We got 10 meter telescopes right. down here. There you go. Right. And th they are wonderful. Those telescopes on the ground are terrific. And there's going to be even better ones in the future, bigger and bigger. The mirror size gives you a nice bucket for sensitivity, but the reason Hubble is, is so tremendous is that it is above Earth's atmosphere because mm -hmm. our atmosphere does two things to light coming in. It actually makes, it blurs the images a little bit okay, because of the right. turbulence cool. in the atmosphere. And mm. it also filters out some of the wavelengths of light that we're interested in seeing. And so by putting a telescope in orbit around the Earth, but above most of the Earth's atmosphere, we get much sharper images and much better sensitivity in some ways as well. So that's why Hubble is so good. Oh. So the Hubble was launched from the space shuttle and was limited to the size of the cargo bay, okay. uh, the, 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 the size of the satellite and, and the width of the mirror that could fit in that satellite. So that played into the decision of how big Hubble could be. Chuck, have you been to the Air and Space Museum in Washington? I have. Okay, they have a model of the Hubble telescope there. It's the size of a Greyhound bus. Okay? <laughs> so when you say, oh, it's only 94 inches, go, go look at what that looks like. And, uh, but, but you got to admit, you throw a bus up into space and it's nothing. Still. <laughs> go tell that to Robert Goddard. I, oh, we throw a bus in space, it's nothing. All right, let's keep going. How high up does it orbit? It's just about 340 miles above the surface of the Earth. It orbits the Earth about every 97 minutes. Okay. Oh, nice. And so, so can you observe when it's in sunlight, or do you have to wait until it's on the dark, darkened side of the Earth? Well, it simply cannot point toward the sun or, or anywhere within a certain something like a 30 to 40 degree so range around the sun. It, it shouldn't. Yeah. It, it can't. can't. <laughs> no, we would never do that. But as long as we're pointing far enough away from the sun in a at, different an at an angle, mm -hmm. then uh, we can look anywhere we want in the sky. Even with the sun in the sky. Even with yeah. the sun in the sky. But, but the big problem actually is because Hubble is in what we call low Earth orbit, because that's where the space shuttle also operated. Right. It's not very far from the surface of the Earth, which means the Earth looms large in, in the sky for Hubble. So oh. so we can really only, at any moment, we really only have about half the sky that we can look at. And a that's lot of times the Earth is in the way of what we want to look at. So when that's the Darn case, Earth, no. during the orbit, we do other things. We do calibrations. We we try to use that time well when Earth is in the way. And again, Hubble's orbiting very quickly. So every 97, 97 minutes, minutes, it does yeah. a complete orbit. So we don't have to wait long for Hubble to get back into the view of what we're trying to study in I, deep space. And yeah. so for I remembered, I'm old enough to remember, that space-borne telescopes and the, these sorts of objects, they had a lifespan of three to five years. Mm -hmm. You launch them, you get all your data as quick as you can, right. and then it dies. Okay. The batteries die, the, the, what, something goes wrong, but you knew that. The right. engineers would know that. So here's Hubble. We're celebrating its 30th anniversary. Mm. This is factors of 10 longer than other telescopes. So what gives us that? 
Well, because Hubble has basically been refreshed over and over again by astronauts who went up on astronaut servicing missions. Oh. So we, and it was designed for this. So Hubble was launched from the space shuttle with astronauts uh, uh, doing the, the deployment. And then we've had five missions over the years since then where astronauts have gone up on the shuttle connected with Hubble in orbit for a few days. The astronauts would take out old instruments, put in new science instruments, well, repair just connected instruments. With, I just got yes. a picture of that. So you have the shuttle come. There's there's Hubble in free orbit around the Earth. Yeah. Right. The shuttle has to catch up with it, yeah. intersect it, yeah. and then that big Canada arm. There's a robotic there's a, arm. There's Canada right. arm that comes out. Grabs it? <laughs> Grabs it. <laughs> Okay. Exactly. I, I, I don't think yes. I exaggerated. Wow. No, that's okay. I think that's right. It, yeah. And, and it, it, it lassoes it, and then they can work on it without bumping it or right. it floating and away. So the astronauts would come out uh, uh, during these servicing missions, would suit up mm -hmm. to get out of the space shuttle and, and do what we call EVAs, extravehicular activity, while they're suited up in their spacewalk. Spacewalk. Space space walk. Right. <laughs> and, go on, get, yeah. Good NASA ease, but it's spacewalk. Right. I could do two syllables. Right. Yeah. Okay. They would uh, take. Old instruments out, put new science instruments in, repair just things. Are they just clip-ons? I mean, some of them are modular, so they were designed to be more easily removed and mm -hmm. replaced. Some of them, you really have to open up a door into the guts of the telescope to do your repairs. Or, mm. and I, I have to say that these people are heroes. The astronauts and also the the many many engineers and technical experts on the ground mm. who designed these instruments and also some of these tricky repairs that the instruments were re never really designed to to, to take but so, some were yeah right. some yeah, were yeah, some yeah. some parts got swapped out that were not originally exactly. part of the swap out plan exactly. right right yeah hi right. i'm mike massimino welcome to this old telescope what's this <laughs> 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 so, you Mike Massimino is one uh, more than one of the repair what? missions. Yes. Oh, sure. Yeah, these, and he's a fan, he's a friend of Star Talk. Good. Yeah. Yeah. These yeah. missions take years to prepare for. So, mm -hmm. so the actual astronaut servicing mission is kind of the culmination of years of preparation. So that's why this telescope has been basically been made brand new over and over again, in a sense, through these servicing missions, time mm -hmm. and time again. Which is why Hubble, thirty years into its mission, is still very fresh and in fact it's actually more scientifically productive now than it ever has been in all of its mission because of this and also because of innovative ways we're using them. <laughs> one last quick thing just we get and we got to end this info bit so we see these beautiful images mm. and um but scientifically isn't it true that the beautiful images are not as useful to the scientists as they are fun to look at for everybody else we use both images and what we call spectroscopy, spectroscopy. to get information, whether we're looking at solar system objects or galaxies or, or these nebulae. The images are important because we use different filters to see how much flux, how much light is coming in general in different wavelength bands. And that teaches us something also about the distribution, where it's distributed. Mm. But the spectrographs Right, because if there's a part right. of your nebula that's giving one kind of light yeah. and you filter for that, then that'll pop in that image. Exactly. Right, Exactly. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we also use spectroscopy, and some of Hubble's instruments are really better at spectroscopy than imaging. So that's like taking the light and spreading it out into its constituent colors and frequencies. We have two sensitive spectrographs on Hubble right now, mm -hmm. and that gives us much more detailed information for understanding the composition of Mm -hmm. let's say, galaxies or nebulae or even the atmospheres of exoplanets, planets and yeah. exoplanets. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and it tells us also the motions of things. If we can see a, a, a frequency of light, let's say, coming from hydrogen or something that's shifted a little bit from what it's we expect. Something's in motion. It means it's in motion. So we can measure the motions of material swirling around black holes. I or, just, I don't, but this is, yeah. why don't people love this stuff, man? <laughs> this stuff is so awesome. How can people not, everybody should just, this is all we should be doing. I'm sorry. I like that. That's all I like your attitude. Doing. This is all we should be doing. <laughs> yeah. Look, okay. okay, Chuck just blew a gasket. I'm sorry, I blew it. We need to it, leave I'm before sorry. his head explodes. I just lost it. This is <laughs> so damn cool. Jennifer Weisman, thank you. Thanks for being My on Star pleasure. Talk. Yeah. Chuck, we got, we got, they're coming for I you, Chuck. They're coming for me, right? <laughs> the guys in the white jackets are outside right now. <laughs> All right, Star Talk Info Bit. Thanks for tuning in.